Most vehicles are mass spring damper systems. So today we're going to take a look at this motorcycle in order to understand just what viscous damping is and how it plays a role within a mass spring damper system. Now most people understand what mass is, and springs too, but what exactly is a damper? And just what does it do in a mass spring damper system? Now just about every physics or engineering text explains a mass spring damper system as this. A block with a spring and some silly little symbol that's somehow supposed to explain how damper works. Now if you look in a textbook, you'll see dampers described as an element which is responsible for providing resistive force within a mass spring damper system. But to actually understand what a damper does, let's take a look at a mass spring damper system with no damper. Like this. This is just a mass on a spring, so when I pull it down and let it go, it bounces up and down. You could say it oscillates. Or in physics, we would say this is a simple harmonic oscillator. Now the problem with a simple harmonic oscillator is that once it starts oscillating, it doesn't stop until something takes the energy away which is making it oscillate. And that's where dampers come in. Now when talking about suspension systems in vehicles, nearly all vehicles use something called viscous dampers to dissipate the energy from impacts. Now to understand viscous damping, let's take a look at what happens when you try to force a fluid through a tiny hole, like through this straw. See, anytime you try to force a fluid through a hole, there's drag on that fluid. Just try blowing air through the straw. And the harder you try to blow through the straw, the more drag it produces. Keep going. In physics, this is what we call a resistive force. And resistive forces are what's produced in viscous dampers. So let's pull the shock out of the back end of the bike to take a look at exactly how viscous damping occurs in an actual shock. And this is the damper out of the back end of the bike. Actually, this is the coil spring, and this is the damper unit sort of housed inside of it. So let's take a closer look at what's going on inside this damper unit by taking a look at it in a CAD model in order to understand exactly what's going on anytime the bike hits a bump. All right, here we have a model of a damper. The damper has two ends. This end, called the shock body, attaches to the sprung mass, in this case the body of the motorcycle. And the other end, called the damper rod, attaches, in this case, to the swing arm and the wheel. And the damper arm is able to move in and out of the shock body. Now it's a little bit worthless looking at the outside of the shock, so let's section the shock to get a better look at what's going on in here. See, the shock body is filled with damper fluid, and sitting inside the fluid is a piston that's attached to the end of the damper rod. And the important feature of the piston is that it has holes in it. So when the damper rod gets pushed into the shock body, the piston is pushed through the fluid. Now the only way for the piston to move through the fluid is for the fluid to pass through the holes in the piston from one side of the piston to the other. And just like air through a straw, as that fluid is forced through the piston, it creates drag on the piston and damping rod, taking energy away from the system. Now the amount of resistive force which is provided by a shock can be tuned in order to provide an appropriate amount of damping for a particular application. You see my Subaru... Come get in the car. Why? Come get in the car. ...doesn't need the same amount of damping as a motorcycle. Now a shock like this has lots of ports through which fluid can flow, and some of the ports within this damper can change in size in order to provide varying amounts of resistive force depending on the actual damper velocity or the speed at which this shock is compressing as the bike hits a bump. But the specifics of shock tuning are something we're going to save for another day. So in short, dampers absorb energy in order to keep a mass from oscillating indefinitely when it encounters an impact. Now next time we'll use the math, or really the physics of dampers, to derive something called the equation of motion for mass spring damper systems. And then we'll talk about the ideal amount of damping to have in what we call a critically damped system. I hope to see you then.